this day, I, I'm an advocate of the door to door knocking. I, I, I take the guys out to the uh, Tim's area. Right now, we're starting a new batch, and I'm going to take them out and we're going to walk. And uh, I'm going to share that opportunity with them. Uh, do they do it? I don't know. <laughs> Are they going to do the follow up on it? I don't know. But the key, the key thing about this all is that you can do all of this, but if you don't follow up, it's all going to fall to the wayside. It's this waste of time to actually get those contacts, and you don't follow up on those contacts, you're going to lose it. And then when you can't go back, because they're you this lost all the credibility from you coming in with a campaign like this, because they say, hey, you know what? I said yes, and you never came back. You came back like three weeks later. I'm not interested. I think this is a thing that could. And it's happened before. I've had that happen. So don't do that. If you're going to do this, actually plan the time to do it. And, and, and make sure you do a follow up on it. With businesses, at least two days, have time to get all your cards together and put on the back. I had one lady that we went out to, and she says nothing's for free. And she wouldn't give us any information until afterwards I started talking to her, and she said, email me. And that's what I got out of it. But if they're hesitant, the business might be hesitant. But once they start seeing you on a regular basis, then they're more open to it. When you get them to agree to allow you to contact them in the future, mm -hmm. do you do much discovery on how much at that point so you know what to go back to? No, you know what? The part is that you go back to the business and it says, hey, you know what? I'm trying to do. No, I'm talking about at the door. At the door? Yeah. Oh, door knocking? Uh -huh. As far as uh, residential or commercial? Residential. Yes. Okay. So you say, you know, if I come across something interesting, can I get back to you? They say, yeah. Right. Do you do any discovery as to what? Because you, you said that when you call them back, right. you might have to quote with you, but you've got to know what you've got to do. Well, you know, a lot of times what it is is that I just I, I, I will ask them at the doorstep. There's a survey that if I don't ask them, then I'll call them back and I'll say, hey, look, you know what? Let me update my records from you. And, let, and, and, and so... This is, do you have any other residences besides this one? That way you'll know if they own the second property. Okay. How many autos do you own currently? I saw two vehicles in your driveway. Are there any more? Oh, my son, or, you know, and how old are they? And then, you know what? This is a little more than I expected. Can I set 10, 15 minutes to come and talk to you, and that way I can get it, put everything together so that way I can get an accurate quote for you? And then, like I said, if I came, if I if I find something that benefits, I'll keep you informed. And that's what I would do. You do that on the follow-up call. You didn't do that on the follow-up call. Okay. How long does it take to walk up two hundred homes? I was going to say. <laughs> um, I started, but this is this residential. Okay, so I walk businesses too in the morning, and businesses were so much easier. But don't do it because they're 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 the high hanging fruit, all right. Unless they want it now. But I would gather about twenty five to thirty businesses in the morning, and it's really easy. You can pick up the business cards. But if you have to make sure you write the owner's name on the back, or else it doesn't even count, right? So I do that, and it's like I said, it's easy to get the businesses. Active. Then I, and then I would challenge myself from two o'clock in the afternoon to. 8 at night, 8.30, sometimes 9, depends on where I was, I'd be out. Then I get home, and most people don't want to do it, but I get home and I look at all the leads I got. And unfortunately, I was a workaholic. So I would put it in, I would type it all in that night. I'd set up all my thank you cards all set up. Oh, key to thank you cards. I'll share this with you. Get your simple thank you cards. Take that felt tip pointed marker or whatever they have, I guess it's a bit, right? A sharpie. a sharpie. You can write a sharpie, but you don't, I mean, it's, but, but it's a, it's that ball rolling, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, and then you'll take it, the card and you'll write on the card the thank you note and leave that signature part out of it. Take it to your printer, right, and have them print out a bunch of them. What will happen is you don't have to rewrite the note again because you're visiting it for the first time. And then you just sign your signature with that same marker, and it looks all the same. 
<laughs> That's a really good it, tip. You know, you know, fold it together and <laughs> So that way you'll save time and cost you guys. Yeah. It's a little cheat sheet trick we know learned at uh, Jones because, you know, you don't want to sit there doing 25 and then if you are lazy, like some of us were at times because we're so tired from walking, <laughs> the next day we'd have to do 50. Right? <sighs> and then me, I was a procrastinator because I, I was on the hunt. It'd take me probably, what, the third day and I'd have 75 of those things that Crack down and just go, 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 go. You get on a roll, and it, and it does happen. But uh, uh, just try to keep it really simple, and that's why I said when I started doing the thank you cards on the notes like that, the only thing I had to do was just put the address on front, and that was really simple. I just signed the signature, boom, and I was done. Cut, 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 cut it out on time. So yeah, two to five. eight or two to nine. Me. That's what you don't really did. And then And then in the morning, the follow-up is very important. In the morning <clears> I wake up, have my coffee, go do my list of time blocking was another thing I used to. I had to figure out where I was gonna hit, what target was. And whatever you do, here's the key key thing that'll keep you from uh, door knocking. If you drive into a residence, do not sit in the vehicle. Get out of the vehicle. Do not ponder for two hours sitting there. Get out of the car and go and knock on these doors. It happens. I remember my first time I walked out to do that, and I sat in the car for 30 minutes, going, "Oh my God, I can't believe it." And I drive around and around and around, wasting gas, right? Trying to figure out, oh, this is, looks good. Oh no, this is look good. Oh, this looks good. This, after a while, just pull in, park the dang thing, get out of the car, and start walking and knocking, because you can waste like. 45 minutes doing that to a couple hours and saying, where's my day? And I did it at the first. And honestly, after the 250th door of somebody telling you to go to double L hockey sticks, right? You become, I mean, immune. You have no fear once that happens. Even I used to get brave enough where it says, hey, it says there's no soliciting. I know. Right, you knock on the door. Because a lot of times you walk up. They didn't put it there. They're a new homeowner. They didn't even know that that was there. And so you have to take the chance. And then I, we used to come to one and there was a no soliciting right above the board. And he goes, you see that? I said, what? The beam. Yes, I do, sir. He goes, no, on the beam.